plant-based. Hello and welcome back to the Horror Movie Syllabus. My name's Professor Victor and I'm your host as we go through all of the essential, noteworthy, interesting, and well, downright notorious modern horror films. If you're new to the channel, I recommend you check out our introduction video. Uh, the link to that is in the description below. And uh, it'll give you a pretty good idea of how we do things here at the Horror Movie Syllabus. But in short, we look at a particular subgenre of horror and then take a look at three examples of that subgenre. Today, the subgenre that we're talking about is cannibals. Now, cannibals, when you think of them in the terms of horror movies, tend to be kind of one of two things, either uh, tribal cannibalism type things or like backwoods, inbred, cannibal type things. And we're going to look at some of that today, for sure. Um, but we're going to also look at maybe some other examples of it as well. Uh, and partly because we actually have like a backwoods subgenre that we're going to be looking at very soon in the near future. Stay tuned for that. So right now, what we're going to do is we're going to look at cannibal movies where the cannibalism is either the front and center plot of the movie or is uh, a really noteworthy or key plot point of the movie. As usual, the movies that we're talking about today have been organized into levels of undergraduate, graduate, and postgraduate level. Uh, and in this case, they're going to indicate the level of disturbingness with the postgraduate being the most disturbing movie we're going to talk about today. So with that, let's brace ourselves and get into these cannibal movies. The very first movie we're going to talk about today, our undergraduate level movie, is The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And come on, you knew it was coming. Horror fans had to have expected that The Texas Chainsaw Massacre was going to be in this video. It is kind of the quintessential cannibal horror movie. Um, but what's interesting about it is that it's not really so much of a cannibal movie. I'll explain. If you haven't seen the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which came out in 1974, uh, it's about a, a group of young people who get uh, waylaid on a road trip and wind up coming afoul of the Sawyer family, who are a family of uh, deranged cannibals. And hijinks abound, as I like to say, without spoiling things. The movie was directed by horror legend Toby Hooper, and it's uh, one of, if not his very first movie. And it is uh, unrelentingly uh, intense and um, made on a low budget, but really, really incredibly well made, showing off uh, the epitome of his skill. Um, and it is a very uh, grueling ride uh, through some horrific and insane stuff. Uh, that said... I do think that the reputation exceeds uh, the actual uh, violence on the screen. And this is not uh, a revelation of mine. A lot of people have pointed this out. There's actually um, not anywhere near as much on-screen gore in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre as you think there is by A, its reputation, and B, simply by the nature of the title alone. Which, by the way, has to be one of the greatest horror titles of all time. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It tells you kind of everything you need to know about this movie in the title. And this is in the 70s, so this is at a time where, and this persists to this day, movies will have titles that have a little bit more of an air of mystery to them. You know, Last House on the Left and Friday the 13th, which 1980 for Friday the 13th, but you get the idea. Um, movies where the title doesn't exactly tell you much, but it intrigues you enough to want to see it. Texas Chainsaw Massacre tells you exactly what you're getting. You're getting a massacre via chainsaw in Texas. There's what you need to know. <laughs> it's a uh, it's a very effective title. But as a result, I think people have this idea in their head that it's going to be really gory and gruesome. And the movie is directed and edited so well that you kind of think that's what you got. You kind of think that's what you saw on the screen. But in reality... You didn't see as much as you thought you did, and that is masterful filmmaking. That is what makes the movie so good. 
Now, let me be clear. That's not to say there's not violence in this movie and it's not shocking and gory. There is plenty of shocking and gory violence in this movie. And it resonates really well in part because of that direction, because of what you do see, what you don't see, what you hear, which is a key part of it. Uh, and also just the the way that this movie sets up the isolationism. Uh, it also helps that it's shot low budget on this really grainy old film from the 70s because it gives it this almost documentary feel. It gives us this sense of uh, verisimilitude, this sense of reality that makes it that much more effective. Um, it also has the notorious beginning where it claims that it was uh, based on a true story. And yes, technically it's inspired by serial killer Ed Gein. But if you know anything about Ed Gein, first of all, there's no chainsaw involved at all with Ed Gein. Uh, secondly, he was really more uh, uh, of a grave robber. I mean, he did kill people. but uh, So the aspects of the, um, the grave robbing and making furniture out of uh, bones and things like that is where the, the, the true... Um, the true inspired by true events stuff happens in this movie uh the the stuff with the chainsaw and, and and the cannibalism that is all made up but i always like to point out texas chainsaw massacre as the example of using that trope of based on a true story uh to try to scare you even more and it and it works in this case again in large part of because of how it's filmed the other noteworthy thing to bring up about this movie, of course, is the character of Leatherface, who is the chainsaw-wielding baddie in the movie. He is not the only baddie. It's worth noting the entire family, and this is, I guess, kind of a spoiler here. The entire family is uh, something of uh, you know the villain in the movie, uh, but Leatherface, of course, is uh, the most memorable for a number of reasons, not the least of which is wearing a mask made of human skin and, of course, wielding a big, giant chainsaw. The Leatherface character is deeply, deeply disturbing, especially in the first movie. Uh, and more on the sequels in a minute. And he's a horror icon. Uh, he didn't make the slasher icons list because we were putting this movie here uh, in the cannibal section. But he is a, is a slasher icon. He is. Let, let's be clear about that. I'm just, I wanted to talk about this movie more than I would have gotten an opportunity to if I put it in the slasher icons video. So uh, that's why it winds up here. That's why he didn't make that video. But he is, no mistake, an icon, a horror icon, a slasher icon. I said earlier that this movie is barely a cannibal movie, and the reason for that is is you don't see a lot of the cannibal aspect in this movie. It's made fairly clear that the people being terrorized, tormented, and killed in this movie are being sent to the slaughter for cannibal reasons. They're, they're going to be eaten. That's clear in the movie. But the movie's not heavily focused on that. So it's maybe a little bit weird that I chose this movie for this particular subgenre as one of the representatives because you would say, well, there are so many other movies that are so much more focused on the cannibalism or show the cannibalism, and you're right. But this movie is so well known for being a movie about cannibals. It's, it's like I said, one of the quintessential cannibal horror movies. So I kind of had to put it here. Um... To, to not put it in here felt almost wrong, even though I'd say um, you don't get as much cannibalism in this movie as you would in some of the other movies we're going to talk about. But it, it is a cannibal movie. Uh, cannibalism is a key part of the movie and of the series as a whole. Uh, and like I said, it's endured as a, a representative, uh, iconic representative of cannibal horror. And it kind of it kind of defines the subgenre, or at least a certain part of the subgenre. So we really kind of did have to include it here. Now, like I mentioned, this movie is a franchise, and the franchise is all over the place. There's uh, several sequels to the movie. Uh, there's some prequels to the movie. There's remakes of the movie. There's sequels and prequels to the remakes. Um, it's kind of a mess of a franchise, to be honest with you. The, the, the movies vary in quality. Uh, there's a, a lot of love for uh, the second movie. Uh, uh, not my favorite, but a lot of people love that one. Uh, the, the the remake of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie is actually uh, got a lot of love for it. Um, that one is uh, with Jessica Biel and, and made by Michael Bay's Platinum Dunes, and, and has a very slick look. It loses that that grainy aesthetic that I mentioned earlier that gives it that kind of reality, but the slick look still works really well. That movie is surprisingly very very good. Um, and then it's got like a prequel sequel that's it's not good. Um, the continuity for the series is all over the place. There's um, there's Texas Chainsaw Massacre Next Generation, which has uh, Matthew McConaughey and Renee Zellweger before they were famous. So that one's a little bit fun for that reason. Otherwise, it's really, really strange. Um, 
There's Texas Chainsaw 3D, which I like a lot. Fight me on it. I don't care. I like Texas Chainsaw 3D, even though it's it's god stupid. It's 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 just really ridiculously dumb. But I like Alexander Daddario. I like that movie. Um, yeah, I, I don't care. Um, uh, there was the Leatherface movie that's supposed to be going into the background of Leatherface. That movie's a bit of a mess. There, there's a lot uh, of movies in the in the franchise. They're all over the place. Uh, if you love this series, check them all out. But the really the only thing you have to care about is this original movie. It is intense and amazing. It's really well made. It's it's a nightmare film. Uh, it's not for the faint of heart. I'll tell you that right now. Um, again, uh, maybe not as gory as you think it is, but it, it really is just nail-bitingly intense and, and, and horrific. And so you, you really should be prepared for what it is you're going to get. And you'll notice I, I, I'm ranking these movies in, in order of um, disturbingness, and this is where I'm starting. So you buckle up. You can see where we're going for a ride on this one. But by no means is this movie, because it's the first movie we're talking about, not disturbing it is it's a disturbing film so be aware of that if you're going to check it out for the first time and if you have seen it which many of you probably have let us know uh, in the comments what you thought of it um do, do you revere it as much as uh, as the core community in general does uh, as much as i do because i actually do really love this movie or do you do you think it's a little overrated uh do you like some of the sequels better i know there are some people that think they like some of the sequels better than the original which seems sacrilegious to me but make a case for it if you can in the comments below because i'd like to hear that uh but definitely the first one is a horror bona fide classic so it needs to be seen to be believed <laughs> definitely check it out if you haven't before texas chainsaw massacre it's a must see Our next movie to talk about today, our graduate level movie, is Raw. Now, Raw came out in 2016, and already there's going to be a little bit of controversy for me putting this above Texas Chainsaw Massacre in terms of disturbingness. I'm going to have to try to justify that, and I will in just a minute. If you haven't seen Raw, the movie is about a young vegetarian girl that goes to vet school uh, following in her sister's footsteps. And... Uh, through a course of events, uh, winds up exploring cannibalism. Uh, once again, I'm going to stop there, uh, lest I spoil the movie too much. But the movie is a French film and could have been uh, one of the New French Extremity. I, I'm not sure if it's actually considered New French Extremity or not, but it definitely could be. Um, it's got all the elements, uh, and if you saw my video on the New French Extremity, you know that the elements from the New French Extremity are kind of particular. And it's got the elements there to be New French Extremity, in particular the violence. Um, and the movie is excellent. It's beautifully made, wonderfully acted, um, and really, really nuts. <laughs> it's an intense nuts movie. Now, I put this as more disturbing than the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and objectively speaking, that may not be true. Is true for me. Uh, so this is one of the cases where my horror movie syllabus um, is getting biased by my personal viewpoint. And I always said I'd try to be upfront with you guys about that when I do that. And this is one of those cases. So I don't eat meat. Uh, and I'm not here to proselytize to you about the pros or cons or virtues of, of not eating meat. I just, I don't eat meat. Um, and the character in this movie is a vegetarian. Um, and early on in the movie, she is forced to eat meat, and that is a trigger for the rest of the film. It's an actual plot point in the movie. And that is a part of why the movie hits so well for me. It really disturbed me to no end. Uh, the, the whole thing about it is these, these, these vet students go to, uh, go to this vet school, and the, the meat and all that stuff is part of a hazing ritual that I found to be incredibly disturbing. And then uh, what the the meat eating uh, kicks off throughout the rest of the movie, also incredibly disturbing. Now that stuff I think will disturb everybody. I think that's the stuff that um, whether you eat meat or not is going to be disturbing to you. Um, and like I said, Texas Chainsaw Massacre doesn't really delve into or more specifically show the cannibalism. This movie does. So. That's another thing where other people, even if they're meat eaters, might um, might agree with me that maybe Raw is a bit more disturbing than Texas Chainsaw because it goes there in that, in that regard. Um, in terms of the dread and terror and the intensity, 
Texas Chainsaw Massacre's got Rob beat. Raw is not on the same level of intensity and depravity as Texas Chainsaw Massacre. They're very, very different beasts. They are apples and oranges. Like I said at the beginning of this movie, when you think of cannibal horror movies, you think of a certain type of thing. And Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a large part of what you're thinking of because it establishes that. Raw is nowhere near any of that. It's a very, very different beast, partly because it's French, partly because it's an entirely different story than the... Uh, the backwoods hillbilly is getting a hold of you and trying to eat you that we are going to talk about quite a bit um, and that you've probably been familiar with if you're a horror fan. Uh, Raw is a very different beast entirely and that's part of what I love about it. It's a wonderful movie. It's wonderfully gory. It's wonderfully made uh, and it is. Uh, it does feel fresh as a result of that. For a cannibal movie, it's very different than other cannibal movies that I've seen uh, and that you've probably seen as well. Uh, really, really great movie. Uh, but it is disturbing and it is very graphic and it I mean I kind of think it's got a, a humor edge to it as well there's some parts in this movie that are really gross but also really really funny and kind of ridiculous and I'm convinced that that's intentional again uh, New French Extremity this would make some sense um, but it, it, it helps make the movie go down a little bit easier if you'll pardon the pun um, it definitely makes it a little bit more accessible. So Raw is is, is graphic and gross uh, and, and, and disturbing for sure, but it's also an awesome ride. So I would definitely recommend you check it out if you've got the stomach for it uh, and let us know what you think uh, when you check it out. Um, uh, did, it, did it hit for you like it hits for me? Uh, should I have swapped it with uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre and let off with Raw? Uh, is, is Texas Chainsaw more disturbing to you? Uh, let us know in the comments below. The last movie that we're talking about today, our postgraduate level movie and our most disturbing movie to talk about, is it's Cannibal Holocaust. Now, you probably figured we'd had to talk about this movie at some point, and of course, Cannibal is the subgenre to talk about it in. Um, and we're going to talk about it, because uh, we have to. Uh, it, it has to be discussed. Um, so if you're not familiar with it, Cannibal Holocaust came out in 1980, and it's uh, probably the first found footage movie. Uh, it's not completely shot in found footage, but the idea is a bunch of documentary filmmakers went into the jungle to uh, find this cannibal tribe, and they, uh, they disappeared. Uh, they were killed. Uh, and the footage has been found, and they're going through the footage now. So quite literally, the found footage uh, trope starts here. Um, the movie is notorious for a number of reasons, primarily related to the content of the film, which is horrible. Um, so <laughs> I just mentioned uh, when we were talking about Raw that I don't eat meat. I don't eat meat because I like animals. It's, it's, it's as simple as that. Um, and this movie has a lot of horrific violence on the screen, a lot of horrific violence on the screen. And all of it is um, special effects, except for the violence against the animals. Um, the animals that are killed on screen are killed for real. Uh, that is real animals being killed and mutilated. Uh, and that's a problem for me uh, and, and for a lot of people. Uh, and it's a big part of why I hate this movie. I, I hate it. I just, I just, I hate it. Um, it's not that it's an irredeemable movie or anything like that. And by no means am I a squeamish person. I, I have a lot of affection for, for other movies that are incredibly intense and violent and graphic. Uh, I mean, if you saw my new French extremity video, you, you know what I'm talking about. I, I love this stuff. Um, but this movie for a number of reasons, not the least of which is the, uh, the animal violence it does not sit well with me. It's it's an ordeal to watch this movie and not in a fun way, not in a challenging way. Um, it's notorious for that reason. It's been banned in a lot of movie, uh, a lot of countries for this reason. Um, uh, and also, uh, no, wor no, worth noting, this is actually a funny story. Um, uh, in Italy, where it was made, I think it was made in Italy, um, the, the director was arrested because the depictions of the documentarians getting murdered was so real looking that the government thought that they had really been murdered uh, and put on film. They thought it was a snuff film. And he had to actually bring the actors into court and, and explain how they did these uh, practical effects, uh, which are very, very good, very convincing. 
uh, in order to uh, to absolve himself uh, of any criminal wrongdoing, uh, which is impressive. And that's a it's a it's a great story, and it, it kind of it lends to the notoriety of the film uh, in a good way. And I would be up for that. And, and if maybe they could have just used the same kind of uh, amazing practical effects for the for the animals, maybe it wouldn't be such a problem for me. Uh, but whether it's budget reasons or laziness or just a general lack of care. Um, they just chose to, to kill the animals anyways. Um, and that's not the only disturbing problem with the movie. Uh, this movie has uh, a lot of uh, racial concerns in there, some extremely graphic depictions of uh, sexual violence, sexual assault, that is, um, I mean, I'll be honest with you, man, like, you know, supposedly that's simulated, but... <laughs> Um, that's another one that's a little bit too real. And, I'll, and, and, and I mean, I, I don't know. I'm not on set. I don't know that these actresses are uh, uh, on board with how this is going to go. Uh, I'm not 100% sure that they were uh, sexually assaulted or at least felt uh, violated in some way. So that's another reason why this movie just becomes really, really awful to watch. Um, the concept of, uh, you know, this guy putting this documentary together uh, from the found footage of these documentarians and then kind of fighting with uh, people who want to put it out there because of the behavior of the documentarians is a, is a actually really good premise for the movie. And um, this idea of how the documentarians like lose their civility uh, and humanity when they're uh, put out in the jungle, that they're, they're really the savages in the movie. That's actually really fascinating. And I actually like that part of the movie quite a bit that message of the movie and the horrific things done by the documentarians not what's done to them but what they are doing themselves is really really fascinating it's a really neat idea and if that was where the focus of the movie was without this other garbage uh i would probably love this movie but like one of the things that the documentarians do is shoot an animal to death for real in real life I don't need that. You know, I just don't. I don't need I don't need that. Um uh and then, you know, some of the sexual assault stuff. Again, um you know, uh, there are other movies that show graphic sexual assault and I feel like uh uh it, it has a point in the movie. There's a need for it to show, to be shown in order to have the movie hit in the right way. Uh Irreversible, a movie we talked about not too long ago, is a pretty great example of this. This movie it feels like exploitation because this movie is exploitation. The stuff being shown on the screen is being shown um, to titillate and excite and, and, and not to um, create this emotional response or to create this, um, not, to, not, 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 to, not to tell a deeper message. Uh, I think it's fairly clear. I mean, it, you, you may differ with me on this, but I think it's pretty clear that this movie is an exploitation film. And I, I love exploitation films. I don't have a problem with that. But I felt like this one actually maybe crossed the line. Uh, uh, well, no, not me. It did. It crossed the line for me. Um, your mileage may vary on that. Uh, uh, you know, some people uh, don't have the same feelings about animals that I do, obviously. Um, and, and some people have a stronger stomach for things like, you know, sexual assault and stuff like that in their, in their cinema. Um, but this movie is uh, noteworthy and notorious. I think that it's trying to be important, but I don't think that it is. Um, I know that there's a Blu-ray version of this that supposedly cuts out the, um, the animal cruelty. Uh, and I was actually curious about that. I thought about buying it and checking it out, but a, I didn't really want to buy this movie again. And B, um, I don't really care to see it again. Um, I'm not to say I would never watch it again, but it wasn't fun. It's not a fun experience for me. I mean, like a lot of the other violent movies that we've talked about in the past, a lot of the exploitation movies we've talked about, they do have a fun aspect to it. This movie doesn't feel fun. And I'm not really quite sure what they were trying to do with it, but I don't think they succeeded. I really don't. I think that um, if there was some sort of deeper message or, or, or commentary, it got lost by all of the sensationalist exploitation. Uh, and that's unfortunate. I know that uh, Eli Roth did a movie called The Green Inferno uh, that I've seen uh, that's inspired by this one. It's not actually a straight remake, but it's inspired by this one. And that movie I did have fun with. Um, it's not an amazing movie. It's not particularly noteworthy other than the fact that it's, you know, inspired by this one. And, and you know, it's, it's Eli Roth, so you can count on there being gore and stuff like that. That one I had a little more fun with. I, I That one, I, I, I didn't have these hangups with that one. Um, 
it also is nowhere near as extreme as 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 the, as the, the kind of a Holocaust. Uh, this is a movie that has an extremely um, strong reputation for being one of those movies that's taboo and rough, etc. And it is well well deserved. So I'm warning you. I'm actually telling you maybe not to watch this one. I mean, if you haven't seen it. I want you to know that it's uh, that it's a noteworthy, notorious film. I want you to be aware of its existence. I want you to be ex- un, un, uh, be aware of and understand why it's so notorious. But I don't I don't think you necessarily need to see it. Um, uh, or if you were you know interested in seeing the cut that doesn't have the animal cruelty in it, you know, go with God. But be aware there's a lot of other stuff in there that's very disturbing besides the animal uh, stuff. So um, yeah, you know, um, use your judgment on this one. Uh, bear in mind, you know, I've been watching horror since I was uh, a wee lad, uh, and it was probably too young to be watching it. And I, I think of myself as having a very strong constitution for it. And this one got to me, uh, and really bummed me out. So I'm not actually recommending you go check it out. Uh, but if you have thoughts on it, uh, please share them in the comments below. Um, if you, if you do think that there is, um, uh, more value to this movie as some sort of social commentary or something like that, uh, share that in the comments below. Uh, I'd like to hear, uh, your explanations of it. And I don't think you're wrong. I do think that there's an attempt to do something there. I think there's an attempt to say something. I just think it missed the mark. I think that it fell short. If you disagree, if you think otherwise, uh, please, please, let's, let's have a discussion about that in the comments. I, I, I'd love to hear your opinion on that. But for me, Cannibal Holocaust is 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 a nightmare for all the wrong reasons uh it's no fun uh no bueno um but important enough to make the, the syllabus uh so here it is do with it what you will so that's going to do it for our discussion of the cannibal movies in the horror movie syllabus but uh i've got some extra credit movies that are a little bit more fun than cannibal holocaust so let's get right into those the first one I'm going to mention is Wrong Turn. And Wrong Turn is a pretty well-known series of uh, horror movies about cannibals. The first one is a lot of fun, for me at least. And I think a lot of people do have some affection for this one. And it is uh, a, not unlike Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's kind of that formula. You know, a bunch of pretty people go out into the woods and run afoul of uh, some mutant cannibals. And this one uh, I particularly enjoy because it's got some noteworthy actors in there, not the least of which is Eliza Dushku from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Y'all know that I love my Buffyverse, um, and Eliza Dushku is my favorite character in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, so I kind of love her in everything she does. So I I am very biased when there's an Eliza Dushku movie. Um, it's also got Jeremy Sisto and Emmanuel Shikri. Uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I'm probably not, but... Um, uh, you recognize them from their stuff too. Uh, J- Jeremy Sisto, fantastic actor. Um, and so that gives the movie some a- extra fun, um, seeing them perform in it. It's got some good kills in it. The the character design for the for the cannibals is really really good, uh, and it's a fun time. It's 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 having a good time. It's got like I said some graphic stuff, but it's not gonna uh, upset you the way Cannibal Holocaust upset me. Um, it's just a good time. It spawned a a, a bevy of sequels uh, and prequels. Um, as a whole franchise, I think it's six movies deep, uh, and the, the 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 quality varies on those movies. The second one's pretty good, as I remember. I, I don't even think I've seen all of them. I'm not sure. I definitely haven't seen the new remake that just came out like a couple months ago, uh, and I just got it. I haven't watched it yet, but I just got it like yesterday, and uh, I've seen the reviews of it, and they've been mixed. Uh, there's some people who really really like it as a kind of a fresh take on the wrong term franchise, and then there's a lot of people who didn't like it because it's not the wrong term franchise. Um, kind of like when we talked about uh, Leprechaun Origins, I'm kind of hoping it's not like Leprechaun Origins. I'm hoping that it's uh, a, an interesting and fun fresh take, because I'm excited about it, because I do like this series. I do think it's fun. I do think that it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, so you kind of have to check your brain at the door for it. Um, uh, I think Josh and Movie Timelines did a really good job of explaining the continuity being pretty wonky in these movies. Uh, so if you're a stickler for that, that's going to be a problem. And you should check out Josh's video, by the way, because it's really, really good. But I really enjoy the Wrong Turn franchise, especially the first one. The first one, probably, in my mind, still the best of the bunch, although a lot of people make a case for the second one as well. So check that one out if you haven't, if you like cannibal movies. The next movie I'm going to mention is Motel Hell, which is a an 80s movie that has a, a cult following and is a lot of fun. Uh, it's about uh, a pair of motel owners who... Uh, 
whose guests come and check in but don't necessarily check out. Um, and this movie is kind of bug nuts crazy. It's really kind of weird. There's um, some maudlin and over-the-top acting, uh, which I can really get into sometimes. And uh, in this case, it really works well. Uh, I think it's got a cult following in part because of Rory Calhoun, who plays the main uh, motel owner. He's chewing scenery. He's really great in this movie. And this movie has just really bizarre characters in it. Really bizarre characters in it. Um, and, you know, the, the, the brother and sister who run the hotel, um, they're a lot of fun. Uh, and, and it's just, it's just kind of, it's almost surreal, this movie in, in, in how they, uh, cultivate their, their, their meat, uh, uh, for their cannibalism. And it's, 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 it's got its tongue firmly in its cheek, but it's by no means a comedy or a parody. It's just kind of a goofy slasher film and it works for me. It really, really does. And, and I'm not the only one. It's got a cult following. I'm honestly kind of shocked that there hasn't been a proper remake of it. And it didn't spawn off any sequels. And it's a shame because it's got uh, some really great moments in it. The The ending the ending fight is visually very memorable. Um, and that character could have been a slasher icon had they decided to ch- to, 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 to follow up on it and and, and, and kind of exploit that, but they didn't. Uh, and it's kind of a bummer because the movie is a lot of fun. It's it's weird uh, in the best possible ways. Um, so if you haven't seen it, check it out. And if you have, let us know what you think, of course. Now, the last movie I'm going to mention as extra credit is The Neon Demon. And like Raw, this is a little bit different than what you normally are thinking of when you think of cannibal horror films. In fact, this movie is like an art house film. It really is an artsy film. Um... And if you didn't know that it was a cannibal film, you wouldn't necessarily be able to tell from the marketing that it's a cannibal film. Um, the movie is great. It stars Elle Fanning, and it's gorgeous. It's a real stylish movie. And the cannibal stuff is kind of hilarious and gruesome at the same time. And this movie is languid and beautiful and kind of vapid in in a good way it's hard to explain that without spoiling too much about it it's about a model who gets into the modeling industry uh and there's cannibalism involved and that's all i'll say about it um and it's directed by uh, nicholas winding refin or nicholas winding refin I, I have no idea how to pronounce this guy's name uh and i'll be honest with that because i kind of kind of don't care he um he made a big splash with the movie drive starring uh uh ryan gosling who i like a lot uh drive it was kind of an overrated movie to me. People lost their minds about it and about the director. And I kind of felt like the whole thing was overrated. So I kind of got sick of hearing about him. And that's why I slept on this movie for a long time. Because I just wasn't interested in this Nicholas Winding Refn guy. Uh, but I, I went up catching it on, I think it was on Shudder. Um, and wow, <laughs> really, really cool. And and I, I got to turn around and maybe give a Drive another chance. And maybe his other movie, Only God Forgives, which I've heard is not very good. I maybe need to give Nicholas here uh, another shot because this movie is gorgeous. It really is a beautiful work of art, um, and it kind of echoes the the models and, and you know the photography going on in in the movie's story. Uh, so that's kind of a clever way of doing it. Uh, it really translates well. So uh, if you if you haven't seen this movie, I think I would say check it out. But it's it's an unusual one. It's not going to be for everybody. It's a weird movie. It's a slow burn movie. Um, and so I can't just say, yeah, definitely check it out. You'll love it. But I'll, just, I'll say it wasn't what I was expecting in a good way. I was really pleasantly surprised by it. And I do think it's a beautifully, beautifully shot movie. Uh, Elle Fanning is really good in it. All the acting in it is really, really good. It's got my girl Jenna Malone in it. I'm a big Jenna Malone fan. She's, she's awesome in the movie. Uh, so... Um, so yeah, if you haven't checked it out before, uh, um, consider checking it out. I guess is the way I'd say it. I, I won't necessarily say you're gonna love it, but give it a, give it a chance if you are so inclined. Based on what I've just said, um, again, don't want to spoil things for you, but it's a it's a weird trip, and uh, I think you might be able to get into it. So that's why I'm throwing it up here as extra credit. So that's all we have for cannibals today. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed our journey into uh, eating meat of the taboo kind. Uh, if you have uh, some thoughts on cannibal movies that I've missed. Uh, go ahead and leave those in the comments below. Caveat being, we are doing our Backwoods video very, very soon. And there is a lot of overlap in these two subgenres. Uh, there's a lot of movies that probably could be um, mentioned here as cannibal movies that I'm going to be mentioning next week. 
in the in the backwoods video so some of your suggestions might wind up being talked about very very soon that doesn't mean you shouldn't mention them we've been talking a lot in the time in the comments below about uh other suggestions and i love it i love hearing your guys' suggestions i've been making them uh part of my to watch list which again is getting super long but doesn't mean you guys should stop please give us your suggestions in the comments below let us know what you think with that, thank you guys very much for your attendance. Uh, it's time for us to go get something to eat because uh, I think your appetite's probably been stoked by now. So, class dismissed. <laughs>